Hey folks, Barnaby Dixon here. So you may remember my bug puppet from a few years ago. I'm making a series now, this is the first episode, where I recreate this puppet. And in this installment, we'll be rebuilding the wing mechanism. So stick around and you'll see exactly how I did it. And today's video partner is NordVPN. So hang tight and we'll tell you more about them soon. No, no, no! I found it. I thought I had lost this. I modeled this years ago. I modeled this in 2020 and I was looking recently for it and I was thinking I spent so long modeling that how could I have lost it and then I found it on a really old hard drive and uh, these are essentially all of the parts that I can use to remake the Manu style puppet. I thought I'd lost it. So this was a significant discovery because of all of my puppetry designs. This one forms the basis for the most characters, including the bug puppet. The first video featuring my bug puppet is my most viewed video to date. Something about his design really seems to have resonated with people and I'm keen to do more with him. However, it's been a few years since I designed him and I've made so much progress in my own practice since then. Redesigning him in any capacity will have to be done carefully because there was so much that was right about the initial design. Still, there is some room for improvement, so join me in this short series as I recreate the bug puppet. Of all of the iterations that I've made of the Bug Puppet 2, now one in 2017 and one in 2019, I've never got the wing mechanism quite right. So of all the changes I'll make in this new version, this might be the largest one. I think this worked. That is perfect, look at that. Oh, that wasn't as easy as I thought. <sighs> So the 3D printer I'm using is the Frozen Mighty 4K and the resin is the Aqua Grey resin that they have. Both very, very good products. They haven't sponsored this episode, but they did send me the stuff for free, so many thanks to them. The reason this piece broke, though, is because I tried to be a smarty pants and made a raft piece as opposed to the general support. For the most part, it worked. That's the only part that broke, which is okay, actually, because I'm remodeling this for the improved wing mechanism. <laughs> So Milliput has a few stages of drying. Before it goes completely solid, it goes a little bit rubbery for about an hour or two. And that'll be useful because it's very thin at this point. And I'd like to prise it away, but not end up misshaping it. Perfect. Okay. Under there. Yes. Look at that. Easy. Wonderful. This was actually so it would cure separate to the other piece and not stick. So we can, since we've prized it away already, just sit it back on there and wait for it to cure entirely. So my knuckles were bumping up against this part of the mechanism, so I cut the thing in half so I can add just an extra, maybe half inch or so. Since there's now essentially a fault line between these two materials, they might be a bit weak, so I'm employing a technique to reinforce this joint. Okay, some super glue. Okay, fill that groove up, put this one like that and push it down a little because we want this one relatively flat. We don't want it interfering with this mechanism. All we need really is it crossing over this border, which it's already doing. So that's, that should be fine, I think. And the other side. So there's a fair bit of friction being incurred, actually. You can see if I do this and then squeeze it together. When I take it into the uh, modeling software, I'll be able to create a bit more of a gap for these to move freely. Oh, hang on, that's the wrong way around. RX18E. Oh no, that's not right either. So at present, I plan to run this cable mech to this point here. Problem is, it goes up and to the side. Now that's so that I can create an, a big enough gap to make the pull long enough, essentially. But the problem is, as you can see, a, quite a sharp angle is incurred here. And that really increases the friction. So I wonder if I move this hinge to this corner here, and create the pull from the middle, whether I'll have an easier time. Oi, we dropped the hinge, but that doesn't matter. We're making a new one anyway. It's a pity to pull away parts that I've made, but when you're sure. Get out of here, you. Mm, needs to clear away that part. The thing is, if I had reduced the friction here, I'm sure it would have made the pull and that angle easier, but the easier I can make it the whole way through the mechanism, I think is, is the best way to go about it. Just made a soft mock-up here, and I think if we're going from that bottom corner, I think that should be enough pull. Okay, we're gonna make the barrels of the hinges here. 
put one side here and we'll do the same on the other side. So we're going to stick another one here and we're going to keep them splayed for the moment and then fold them around the initial shape. The important thing for now is that this is just a secure bond so it doesn't crack at a certain point. Okay, so we've got those like that and we fold these around. Now this is going to stick to this obviously because it's all uncured putty but we just wait till it's semi-cured then we crack it out and, um, and we can shape it afterwards with the Dremel. Okay, it's the next morning. Perfect. Yeah, look at that, lovely. A little bit of friction, but minimal. And, um, oh, the friction's really dissipating as I do this. Do this a bit more. There we go. So this is the Bug Puppet's hand mechanism now. It's a bit slow due to age, and with maintenance, I could get it a little bit more responsive. The cable mechanism does almost an S shape. It does end up almost in the direction it's facing, well, depending on the angle of the arm, but not after a couple of bends. This does slow the mechanism to a degree. And this is fine for a mechanism like this, but for a wing mechanism where you want that kind of fast flickering kind of flapping, uh, you want it a bit more responsive. It's windy out here. I'm going to go inside. I should mention also the S shape of the cable trajectory of the finger mechanism helps a lot. So it ends up facing the same way that it was facing to start with, but after those two turns. Now, if those two turns were done, let's say in a Z shape, as opposed to a nice smooth S shape, then each of those corners, those hairpin tight corners would incur way more friction than we want. So thinking about that, I considered another way to smooth the trajectory of the wing mechanism's cable. I think that's enough cutting. Yeah, okay. So it's come off as a single piece, that's what I wanted. So I re-angled the lever to follow a more diagonal trajectory as opposed to one that goes straight outwards. And this would reduce the angle and therefore reduce the friction. I then went ahead and scanned the piece and made some useful changes in software. Okay, so this is the assembled mechanism. It's super, super smooth. I'm very, very happy with it. What do I need to do though? So I was asking this question because although the mechanism worked well, the interface in terms of how the thumb moves the mechanism wasn't quite right. You have to pay attention to such things because you want to follow the natural trajectory and movement of the thumb in order to operate it in a comfortable and proficient way. So for the next few days, I tried iteration after iteration until finally I found something that seemed to work. Okay, uh, uh, last night I chopped this one up and did a whole new design entirely. And the pull is a little less um, kinky, if you know what I mean. It goes a bit more straight. What I'll do is I'll chop the top half of this one off and put it on this one because it's slightly different and I can't bother to reprint it. So I kind of think that... Hold that thought. Dabchik here, and I'm sure you're wondering when my stellar content will grace your screens again. Well, whoopsie, we made my torso too large for the scanner. Not to worry, we've been sent another one. So my rebuild will resume sometime in the near future. What else? Oh yeah, privacy. Privacy. Private, see? A precious but elusive mistress in this day and age where everybody seems heaven-bent on shoving ads, trackers, and malware up to booty. Don't like the sound of that? No, me neither. Fortunately, NordVPN's threat protection feature guards your every click while browsing. Downloading a file, threat protection checks it for malware. Clicking a link, threat protection blocks it if it leads to a malicious website. Annoyed by pop-ups constantly flooding your screen? You guessed it, threat protection blocks ads for a smooth browsing experience. You get an email from a friend with a video attached. The message reads, Check it out, this duck has an afro. A duck with an afro, you think, could it possibly be? So you click the link and oh bother, there are no ducks with afros, just malware. And now your device crashes every few minutes. By the way, there are ducks with afros. They're called crested ducks and we saw one on the canal the other day. It was really weird. Nord does not track what you do online and to make sure that your data is never exposed by accident, you can turn on the kill switch. Oh, bold bags. Every purchase of the two-year plan will receive plus four bonus months on top. Includes all plans, standard, plus, and complete. So get an exclusive NordVPN deal here at nordvpn.com slash Barnaby Dixon. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, back to the video. Actually, let's see the duck one is more. <laughs> okay, I look tired because I got obsessed and uh, look at my eye, how bloodshot that is. I've been working on this for about a week, almost straight actually. And it's funny because it's a simple design, but when you're scanning it to make a 3D model, you feel an obligation to get it right because this is going to be the final one. And this pretty much is the final one now in terms of design. Uh, it's symmetrical, which is really nice. And that's nice because 
when you push the lever, you're pushing into the middle of the body and it doesn't kind of twist to compensate. So that's lovely. Uh, I'll polish it up, add a little bit of trim around the outside, and I'll give you a sense of what it looks like after. Okay, so you can kind of see the challenge of uh, discernibility when you don't color match there. Uh, but that should be okay, as I mentioned. I'm going to scan it and, and take all that down. I might allow the scanning process to smooth it. Actually, no, no I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll spaz. Okay, so I have the scan here. I've yet to remove the support, but I don't think I actually will because I might do the scan again. Uh, the detail, especially around the ridge here, is not very good. These are the images that were used to create the scanned 3D model. Uh, and as you can see, not all of them fit entirely in the frame. That could be part of the issue due to the size. The other thing, also due to the size of the object, is that certain areas were in focus while other ones weren't. Uh, because some were much closer to the camera, much further away. So what I might do actually, and this is the nuclear option, I might cut the piece in half again, scan both pieces separately, and put them back together again in the software. That's pretty clean actually. I made this neat spherical clamp for scanning some of the 3D pieces. But in truth, actually, it was a little bit of a faff to set up because you've got to get the tension right between all three of the pins. So. I'm just melting down these little stands that I'm sticking to the pieces instead. It's a lot quicker. So I'm just heating up the top there. And uh, and you want to find the, the natural balancing point because you don't want the piece to be off kilter, especially since the scanner spins it around fairly fast, actually. And there you go. Okay, so I'll show you two segments here. This is the initial scan, the one I had issue with, and look how much smoother the new one is. So clearly those techniques in combination most likely made a big improvement. So one change between the first version and the second version of the Bug Puppet was the wings themselves. In the first one, I just had a single wing going up, but in the second one, I sprung a second wing behind the other one so that when it flung up, the other one had a bit more spring and it would give the impression of a bit more movement, a bit more fluttering. Uh, a really good addition, I think, and one I want to implement in this design too. Okay, so here are some wings from the most recent Bug Puppet from 2019. And in truth, I think I'll just scan these ones. They're very nicely made. Uh, I might have to cut back the reflectiveness, but I think the matte paint that I use anyway will do that. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now the result of this isn't very good, it's very lumpy and bumpy, so I ended up sculpting just the vein of the wing and then adding the flat part, the film, in Blender and the result is a lot better. Okay, those pieces look really good. Yeah, you've got to be more gentle than I was being actually because I made some holes. They don't look too bad actually, but for the next print I will likely thicken these up a bit. Okay, so I have in front of me, I think, all of the printed pieces. I hope the right size. So let's assemble this and see how it looks. So we're going to cut some lengths of this stainless steel. I only use stainless steel or brass or metals that don't necessarily corrode. Brass does oxidize a little bit. Stainless steel is a little better at not doing that. Uh, but that is so that the puppet has the most options with regard to travel and you know, going into different situations, getting rained on, going in the sea, that kind of thing. So we're putting this rod in there. Fairly tight fit, but fits well, I'd say. The fact that I could get it in there without pre-drilling is a good sign. All right, second one in. Second one's a bit harder because uh, you got to work around the first one. So let's hold it with this part, get a grip on that way, and just work it in like that there. Ah, easy. And now we'll put the cogs together and hopefully the rack fits perfectly between them. You see that? Put that on like that. And the other one usually takes a little bit of futzing. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty damn good fit. See them moving? And now these are in place. We can get this piece on to sandwich them. I should have put the wings in first. Let's, uh, let's do that. So for this, we need a thinner gauge of wire. And this is one millimeter thick, I think. And, uh, keeps things light and also a bit more easily bendable too. So that's quite useful because we want a specific shape out of this thing. So I modeled these holes, you can see them there, in the wing shape. And they also need to be stuck to the wire. So what I'll do is I'll make a little loop here. And normally I would use round pliers for this thing because in most situations you wouldn't want to scuff up the wire too much. But in truth, since I'm gluing this, a little bit of surf... Uh, 
<laughs> a little bit of surface texture is actually not going to hurt things. It will help the glue adhere most likely. And then we take this little hook here, slide it over there, with a bit of pushing maybe. That's a really good fit. Ah, and when I add the glue on the top, that should be solid. Do the same with the other wing. Okay, looking good as well. About two millimeters off. That's pretty good. So we hook these bits round in a bit of a tighter hook actually on this one. There we go, so we've got a fairly tight loop on that one. So I think just a little dab of super glue. So I thought I might use epoxy, but it takes a bit too long to dry. Surface tension should hold it in that loop there. Okay, so that's going in this side, and then we put that in like that. Yeah, there we go, that looks like a good fit. Okay, and again, we do the same with the other side. Oh, I forgot one piece as well, which should be upstairs. There it is, lever. Okay, there's some little bit still stuck to it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get that when you put the supports in, but if you put them in the right place, it doesn't hinder the piece too much and the cleanup is, is fairly minimal. So while the glue sets on the wings, we can, uh, we can put the lever in. This only needs a fairly small bit of two mil. And it goes in through here. In an ideal world, it does. We'll see how ideal the world is. You want it to go in with a little bit of resistance, honestly, because you want the piece to pinch the uh, the rod in place so you don't have to worry about it falling out. And uh, if this is to move freely, the hole should be bigger, which oh, we can test if it is. It's going in fairly easily, so we should get some fairly good movement. This might be something to remember on future prints, making this hole just a little, a little bit bigger. Oh, it's coming through now. Actually, so that might be optimal. There we go, see it coming into the middle there. So we'll just keep doing that for a bit. Yeah, we'll do this a little bit and we'll uh, we'll break it in. It makes a big difference. You don't have to do too much of that. What I'll say, though, is that some of the plastics I might use for these pieces, because they're kind of mechanical pieces, might be a little bit harder and therefore harder wearing and therefore harder to break in in that manner. So another reason to get the diameter of the holes correct. But for now, we can just do about 30 seconds of this, I reckon. As I've moved this back and forth, you can see this powder kind of accumulating, and that's literally the uh, the material wearing away and making this more uh, more smooth. You can see here the beginnings of what we're going for. Got to get a good 90 degree, 90 degree-ish bend on this. Ah, there we go. Okay, we'll leave it there for now because I don't want to bend it back and forth and it's, it's loosely in position. Come on, all the way. Nice. Ah, oh, neat, that does actually work quite well. Get in there all the way, you see what it's doing? Trying to trick me. So there we go, I just added this band here. Gravity takes care of a lot of the downstroke, but only when it's in the upright position. This way we can ensure that whatever position the lower body is in, the wings are gonna spring down. And the last piece will be a uh, fishing line. Cause we've got to string this one up. So a, a counterintuitive way to make this secure is actually not with knots. I mean, that could work, I suppose. But what I do is I have two holes in this lever piece, similar to what I have with the wings. And I just go back and forth with a little bit of uh, a fishing line. And the combined, I suppose, friction that that accumulates holds it pretty steadily in place. But not to the extent that if you want to kind of yank it and slacken the line a little bit more that you can't do that. So. I actually, I actually like this approach a lot. You see that? No knots, but pretty strong. So the rack piece has a couple of holes and I'm basically doing the same thing to that as I did with the lever where, you, where I just pass the thing back and forth. Okay, we've gone back and forth a few times and let's apply some tension. Yeah, there we go, that's looking nice. Okay, which would work. Probably I think this sort of size would be good. Mm-hmm, ow. Okay, so we put that in there. Like that, give it a good flexible holding. And then we put that on this one. I lick it to get it uh, more slippery so that I can push it over things. It does help a bit. Okay, that's on, we'll do the other side. Perfect. Okay, 
This looks good to me. So we'll go outside where there's a bit more light because that should uh, give you a better idea of the movement. It will need refining, no doubt, but I don't want to do that prior to having the rest of the puppet uh, assembled because that'll give me a better sense of where to put things and uh, proportions and that kind of stuff. Okay, I'll be honest, it's, it's not there yet. And I'm finding it kind of hard to get a grip with this thumb. And that's making the motion a little bit less snappy. I think the wings are also too long as well. So more weight obviously means more effort to lift them. So uh, let's see if I can do some things. Okay, so I've added this little extension. Making it rounded is important because then you can adjust with your thumb the attack angle and not have to worry about so much kind of pushing in a slightly wonky angle to, to where the lever wants to go. Um, clearing the fingers as well was important. You get the puppet a little less uh, testicular that way. And we'll see when this cures what it's looking like. Sometimes when I leave pieces to cure that are sticking out a little bit like this, I get the camera on time-lapse mode just to film it for about a minute and just to see if it is falling in any direction. Okay, let's see. Okay, that is infinitely better. Great, I'm relieved. Something that I'm not completely sure of yet is where the stopping uh, place will be in terms of the range of motion. Could be around here with the extra panels on, so I'll save any tweaking for when the rest of it is assembled, which will be in a future episode. In the next episode, though, uh, I will be printing the rest of the puppet, so hit notifications and stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.